we have looked at the definition of economics and also learned about the basic math tools that we require for a subject like economics. Now what we'll do in this video is bring all those things together and see how it is used in a concept called production possibilities curve. Let us look at a company called Mark Jeans Incorporated and this company produces two types of jeans one called western cut jeans and the other one called baggy jeans and since we'll be using this again and again we can abbreviate them as WCJ for western cut jeans and BJ for baggy jeans so Mark Jeans Incorporated produces two types of jeans and in order to produce these two types of jeans it requires resources, factors of production or inputs. Suppose this firm employs 50 workers and uses five machines and all these workers work on the machines placed in a building which is on a plot of land and let us assume this is one unit and then the fourth production uh, factor of production that we have is the entrepreneur and that is just one person and that is Mark himself. Now to employ these different factors of production Mark pays wages to workers. He bought borrowed money in order to buy machines and so pays rate of interest on machines and on land and building mark pays rent and the profits made by the firm are cornered by mark himself so we require factors of production or inputs or resources to produce western cut jeans and baggy jeans and since he has a maximum number or a limited number of workers 50 five machines one building and there's one entrepreneur there is a maximum amount that this firm can produce and let us assume that this firm can produce 5000 jeans on a given day and these 5,000 jeans could be in any combination of western cut jeans and baggy jeans. So based on the resources this company has, the maximum amount of jeans it can produce in any combination of western and baggy jeans is 5,000. And now let us look at the production choices available to Mark Jeans Incorporated. Now, in the second column we have western cut jeans as in thousands and in the third column we have baggy jeans as in thousands now look at the following suppose mark decides not to produce any western cut jeans what is the maximum amount of baggy jeans he can produce it will be 5000 baggy jeans Another choice available to the firm is a point like B where Mark decides to produce 1000 western cut jeans. When he decides to do that, the maximum number of baggy jeans he can produce will be 4000. Look at production choice 3. Mark decides to produce 2000 western cut jeans. And so the max amount of baggy jeans he can produce will be 3,000. And this way we can complete an exhaustive list of production choices available to this company. Now this table contains information about production possibilities available to the firm. And hence this table is called production possibilities schedule. Here what I have done is I've plotted that information we had uh, on production possibilities schedule and what we have is let us place western cut jeans as in thousands on the horizontal axis and 
baggy jeans as in thousands on the vertical axis when mark decides to produce no western cut jeans what's the max amount of baggy jeans this company can produce it will be 5000 so we have this point a when mark decides to produce 1000 western cut jeans what is the maximum amount of baggy jeans he can produce that will be 4000 units and in this way we have plotted these points of production choices a b c d e and f and this and we join these points and what we get is a curve and this curve is called production possibilities curve why because this reflects the production choices or possibilities available to mark genes incorporated so based on what we know we can write down the definition of production possibilities curve and we can abbreviate production possibilities curve as PPC and what does this mean it's simply a collection of points like A B C D and so on and what do they represent they represent different combinations of baggy and western cut genes the firm can produce based on the technology and resources available to this firm so this is the definition or a formal definition of PPC. So let us revisit this PPC. So once again, we are back to the same chart. And what you will observe is the following. When Mark is anywhere on this PPC, he is producing a total of 5,000 genes, or that is the maximum amount of genes the firm can produce given its resources and technology and so any point on the PPC will be an efficient point why because the firm is producing the maximum it can now consider a point which is to the right of PPC like this one <clears throat> and here you'll find this firm this point requires that the firm produce more than 5000 genes and given the resources the firm has this point production point is simply unavailable or unattainable or unattainable for this firm given its resources and technology now consider a point like this one and this point lies to the left of the PPC and how much how many genes is the firm producing at this point 1000 western cut genes 1000 baggy genes or total of 2000 genes when we know the firm can produce a maximum of 5000 genes and when you produce less than what you possibly can this would be referred to as an inefficient point so what you should know is what do points on a this PPC mean they mean these are efficient production choices any point to the right of PPC simply means this production choice is unattainable by the firm given its resources and technology and any point to the left is considered inefficient because the firm is producing less than what it possibly can now we are trying to understand all that we can given the information we have now consider the following suppose the firm is sitting at a point like a and decides to move to a point like b or in other words what the firm decides to do is increase production of western cut genes when it decides to do that what happens we have to reduce the production of baggy genes and suppose the firm is sitting at a point like B and decides to move to a point like C or decides to increase production of western cut genes from 1000 to 2000 units what happens to production of baggy genes given the resources and technology we have it has to fall from 4000 to 3000 
Or what you find in terms of this is the following. That is, <clears throat> if you want to have more Western cut genes, what you have to do it is give up the other one. And why does this happen? It happens simply because you have limited amount of resources. And thus, <clears throat> what you should remember is, whenever we have scarcity, we will have a number of choices available to us. And when we have number of choices available to us, we will be forced to decide. And whenever we are forced to decide, what we incur is a cost. You have to give up something in order to gain something. And that cost is called opportunity cost. So, so all this is happening because of scarcity. So remember this, whenever you are in a situation where resources are scarce, you will have a number of choices or options available and you'll be forced to decide. And when you decide, you incur a cost called opportunity cost. <clears throat> now consider two big time resources which, we are, which are limited for us or they're scarce. One is money and the other is time. For example, say you are watching this video and you are watching this say between 10 and 10.15 10, in the morning. Now during this 15 minute time period, what you find is you have limited time or scarcity of time. Now because you have scarcity of time, there are a number of things you could do during say this time period 10 to 10.15. 10, one is you can listen to this lecture video. Another thing you could do is just watch television or maybe go and take a shower. And so remember this. <clears throat> so when you have scarce resources, for example, time, you will have number of options available. And if you decide to watch this lecture video, what are you giving up? You are giving up the pleasure of watching television or simply taking a shower or something like this. <clears throat> Another big time constraint we face is in terms of money. Suppose I have say $5,000 in my bank account, which I don't, but suppose I do. Now, I could do a number of things with this $5,000. One is make a trip overseas. Another possibility could be I could buy a used car. Now, if when I decide to buy a used car, what am I giving up? The benefit of traveling overseas. And if I decide to travel overseas, what am I giving up? The benefit of driving a used car, opportunity cost. 